So hi everyone and a very good morning to all of you. Welcome back once again to another session of PIB 247. In today's session guys we are going to talk about the PIB news from 8th and 9th of October 2022. And about grade A phase 2 is coming and I hope your preparations are going well. If you have related doubt so you can ask in the comment section. Alright. So let's begin with the session and you can also ask your doubt doubts at telegram or instagram my instagram or telegram id is mashi manish right and if you want to have the pdf of this session you can join the telegram channel the link is provided in the description all right so let's talk about the very first question which says consider the following statements with respect to swachhta sarthi fellowship and you have to identify the correct statement now you must be wondering that is it a new uh, initiative or program or something no, it is not a new fellowship program, right? It was launched last year in the year 2021. But then why we are discussing about it? We are discussing about it because a two day event, which is known as Swachhta Sarthi Samaharo, it took place at IIT Delhi. Now, why did this event Swachhta Sarthi Samaharo take place? And what is its relation with Swachhta Sarthi Fellowship? This is also an important thing. So remember this event marked the completion of first year of the Swachhta Sarthi Fellowship of the Waste of Wealth Mission of the Office of Principal Scientific Advisor to the Government of India. Alright. So that is why we are discussing about Swachhta Sarthi Fellowship because it has completed one year and on completion on its one year this Swachhta Sarthi Samaro took place at IIT Delhi. Alright. Now let's talk about Swachhta Sarthi Fellowship program of the Office of Principal Scientific Advisor to the Government of India and who is the PSA is Mr. Ajay Kumar Sood. Ajay Kumar Sood is the Principal Scientific Advisor. Right now talking about this fellowship. So remember the objective of this fellowship is to amplify the role of young students, citizens or sanitation workers. Right. Students, citizens or sanitation workers in sensitizing the society towards waste management. Right. So it is this fellowship is all about waste management and, and it also provides innovative solutions for conversion of waste to wealth or value. It was launched last year 2021 by the Office of Principal Scientific Advisor to the Government of India. And remember the fellowship is provided in three categories. Right? There are three categories in which the fellowship is provided. Number one is for the school students from 9th to 10th standards who are engaged in waste management community work and they uh, they are provided with rupees 500 per month fellowship for a period of one year. Then we have category, category B, B, which is open to college students, whether UG, postgraduate, research students, etc. And they are provided with a scholarship of rupees 1000 per month for a period of again one year. And then we have category C, which is open to SHGs or sanitary workers, special help groups or sanitary workers. And maximum two citizens from same SHG can apply. Maximum two members of SHG can apply for this fellowship. And they are provided with rupees 2000 per month fellowship for a period of again one year. So remember the <clears throat> period of fellowship is one year in any category. While the amount is different. 500 for category A, 1000 for category B and 2000 for category C. All right. And what about this waste to wealth mission? So remember it is one of the nine scientific mission of PM Stiat which is Prime Minister's Science, Technology and Innovation Advisory Council. It has the objective to identify, test and validate the technologies that recover value from waste and are commercially viable. And again, this mission is spearheaded by the Office of Principal Scientific Advisor to the Government of India. Alright, and now let's come back to the question. You have to identify the correct statement. Alright, it is being implemented by Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs. No, absolutely not. It was launched in 2020. No, it was launched in 2021. And the fellowship is given in three different categories. This is absolutely correct. And you have to identify the correct statement, which means option C only three guys will be the correct answer. And now let's talk about question number two. Consider the following statements with respect to International Solar Alliance and you have to identify the incorrect statement. So as you all are aware of this fact that various questions from international and regional organizations are asked in RBI and NABARD examination. So of course, International Solar Alliance is an international organization and that too, it deals with the solar energy, solar energy. So this is very, very important organization. But the thing is, but the question is why we are discussing about ISA. 
because it has been recently announced that fifth assembly of isa fifth session of assembly of isa along with all the side events of isa will take place in new delhi and this is because this year's presidency this is because this year's presidency of isa is with india india is the president of isa this year right and now let's talk about isa so remember it is an international organization with currently 109 members and signatory countries and the 109th member was bhutan theek hai recently joined bhutan recently joined isa and it it became 109th member right it works with government to improve energy access and security worldwide especially in the area of solar energy right of course as the name suggest it 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 is all about harnessing the solar energy right its mission the isa's mission is to unlock an investment of us dollar 1 trillion in solar energy by the year 2030 and thereby reducing the cost of technology and its financing right it was established in the year 2015 by the efforts of india and france theek hai india aur france ke efforts se ye establish hua tha during united nations climate change conference which took place in paris in france right i hope you all know that it, it is headquartered in gurugram in haryana and it is the first international in, intergovernmental organization which is headquartered in india all right and isa assembly jiski panchvi assembly delhi mein hone wali hai that is the apex decision making body of isa and it meets annually at the ministerial level at isa's seat it is represented by each member country of isa all right so that is all and now let's come back to the question incorrect statement identify karna hai currently it has 109 members bilkul sahi baat hai it was established in 2015 with its headquarters at paris no it was established in 2015 but headquarters are at gurugram in haryana right and isa assembly is the apex decision making body of isa which meets two times in a year no this is also incorrect which means option all b only 2 and 3 will be the correct answer because these are the incorrect statements moving ahead to question number 3 recently qr code based rapid opt registration service has been launched under ayushman bharat digital mission in which year the mission was launched see this uh, qr code based rapid opt registration service it is of course not important for the exam right this is not important this is not important but yes the important part is under which mission it has been launched so it has been launched under ayushman bharat digital mission which can be asked in your examination all right so what is this uh, qr code code based rapid opt registration service so basically what will happen is that uh, from now on the old and new patients can simply scan the qr code and all their details like name uh, mobile number age genders all the things will be shared with the hospitals and this will reduce the time taken at the opt registration counter pe jo बहुत सारा टाइम वेस्ट होता था इट विल बी रिड्यूस्ड राइट एंड नाउ टॉकिंग अबाउट आयुष्मान भारत डिजिटल मिशन सो इट इज अ फ्लैगशिप स्कीम ऑफ द गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया टू डेवलप द बैकबोन नेसेसरी टू सपोर्ट द इंटीग्रेटेड डिजिटल हेल्थ इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर ऑफ द कंट्री राइट एंड देयर बाय ब्रिजिंग द एग्जिस्टिंग गैप्स अमंग द डिफरेंट स्टेक होल्डर्स इकोसिस्टम थ्रू डिजिटल वेज बेसिकली द गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया इंटेंड्स टू डिजिटलाइज intends to digitalize the healthcare system of the country right and the most important part of ayushman bharat digital mission is the digital health ids right government of india will provide digital health ids to all the citizens of india in which all the details regarding all the uh, diagnosis diagnosed diseases the treatment taken the medicines taken all the details of a patients will be there right the implementing authority of this scheme is national health authority of course which is currently uh, the ceo is mr ramsevak sharma if i am not wrong it is ramsevak sharma it was launched in the year 2020 this scheme and these are the six building blocks of ayushman bharat digital mission this is health id digi doctor health facility registry personal health records e pharmacy and telemedicine all right and as i told you the digital health id will consist of all the medical details of the individual right So now let's come back to the question. Question is very simple. In which year the Ayushman Bharat Digital Mission was launched? So it was 2020 when the scheme was launched. Moving ahead to question number four. Very very important question. I believe this is a question in your exam. Me, the uh, upcoming NABARD grade examination is phase two. It should be there. Consider the following statements with respect to credit guarantee scheme for startups, and you have to identify the 
correct statement so this is something new which has been announced which has been notified which has been launched by dpiit which is department for promotion of industry and internal trade and it works under the ministry of commerce and industry headed by piyush goel right so dpiit has notified the credit guarantee scheme for startups right now talking about this scheme so this scheme has the objective of providing credit guarantee up to a specified limit against loans which are extended by member lending institutions to startups right see there are various member <clears throat> there are various lending institutions in india like we have scheduled commercial bank we have nbfcs we have other uh, financial institutions which provide loans to the various uh, to the various agencies or you know you know the business or the startups right so these lending agencies will be provided guarantee right if it is a case of startup right under this particular scheme which is credit guarantee scheme for start right and which are the eligible member institutions eligible member lending institutions which will get the guarantee these are all the scheduled commercial banks non banking financial companies and sevi registered alternative investment funds all right now implementing agency for this will be national credit guarantee trustee company limited which will provide the guarantee this trustee company limited will will provide the guarantee to the lending institutions and dpiit will constitute management committee and risk evaluation committee for reviewing supervising and operational oversight of this particular scheme all right <coughs> now remember the guarantee cover will be uh, two types will be of two types number one is transaction based and another one is umbrella based right umbrella based or transaction based now in the transaction based guarantee cover what will happen the cover will be 80% of the amount in default if the original loan sanction amount is up to rupees 3 crores now if the amount of loan is up to rupees 3 crores 80% of the amount will be covered under this guarantee if the amount of loan is between 3 crores and up to 5 crores the amount of guarantee will be 75% of the amount while if the loan is above 5 crores and up to 10 crore per borrower then 65% of the amount in default will be covered right and under transaction based guarantee cover the single eligible borrower basis pe jo loan diya gaya hai that will be covered right and it will promote lending by banks or nbfcs to eligible startups now next one is umbrella based guarantee cover and under this guarantee cover the cover will be provided to venture debt funds registered under aif regulations of sebi aif is alternate investment fund and venture debt funds are those which which provide loans to the startups in initial phases right jo startups ko initial phases mein loan provide karte hain for setting up their venture that is known as what venture debt funds so under this umbrella based guarantee cover the guarantee will be provided to venture debt funds as well right now under this uh, cover the extent will be the actual losses right will be the actual losses up to a maximum of 10 crores or up to a maximum of 5% of pooled investment on which cover is being taken from the fund in eligible startups let's say uh, the total pooled investment is 100 crore of any venture debt fund right or let's say 100 crore loan is provided by a, a venture debt fund so is the 5% ki guarantee di jayegi up to a maximum of rupees 10 crores all right so i hope there is no confusion let me repeat this isko main repeat kar deta hu because thoda sa i believe ye confusing hai number 1 जो एक्सटेंड होगा दैट विल बी अप टू द एक्चुअल लॉसेस बट अप टू मैक्सिम ऑफ टेन करोर ओनली लेट्स से देर इज अ लॉस ऑफ रुपीज इलेवन करोर राइट इन दैट केस टेन करोर विल बी प्रोवाइडेड बाय अंडर दिस गारंटी कवर एंड वन करोर विल बी बोर्न बाय दी लेंडिंग इंस्टीट्यूशन ओनली राइट वो उसको लॉस उठाना पड़ेगा एंड और अप टू अ मैक्सिम ऑफ फाइव परसेंट ऑफ पूर्ड इन्वेस्टमेंट ऑन विच कवर इज बींग टेकन फ्रॉम द फंड इन एलिजिबल स्टार्ट ठीक है जो टोटल अमाउंट ऑफ लोन है टोटल अमाउंट ऑफ पूल इन्वेस्टमेंट है उसका पांच परसेंट का कवर दिया जाएगा एंड दैट इज आल्सो अप टू मैक्सिमम ऑफ टेन करोर पर बोरोवर और राइट अगर अभी समझ नहीं आया तो प्लीज राइट डाउन इन द कमेंट्स आई विल एक्सप्लेन इट वंस अगेन राइट सो एक्सपोजर टू इंडिविजुअल केसेस इट इज कैप एट रुपीज टेन करोर पर केसेस जो मैं आपको बता दिया द मैक्सिम कवर दैट विल बी प्रोवाइडेड इज अपू रुपीज टेन करोर ओनली नॉट मोर देन दैट ओके सो दैट इज ऑल अबाउट दिस कीम एंड नाउ लेट्स कम बैक टू द क्वेश्चन the implementing agency will be national credit guarantee trustee company limited correct no problem with this transaction based cover will be 80% of the amount in default if the original 
लोन सैंक्शन अमाउंट इज अप टू रुपीज थ्री करोड़ दिस इज ऑल्सो करेक्ट पेमेंट बैंक एंड स्मॉल फाइनेंस बैंक आर अमन दी मेंबर लेंडिंग इंस्टीट्यूशन अंडर द स्कीम सी ऑल द पेमेंट बैंक आर नॉट द शेड्यूल कमर्शियल बैंक ठीक है सी देर आर वेरियस पेमेंट बैंक विच आर विच हैव बीन गिवेन द स्टेटस ऑफ शेड्यूल कमर्शियल बैंक बट नॉट ऑल पेमेंट बैंक आर शेड्यूल कमर्शियल बैंक एंड दैट इज वाई आई एम सेंग दैट दिस स्टेटमेंट इज इन करेक्ट ऑल राइट सो दैट इज वाई ऑप्शन ए ओनली वन एंड टू विल बी द करेक्ट आंसर Moving ahead to question number five, which of the following ministries is organizing Pradhan Mantri National Apprenticeship Melas across 280 location in 28 state or UT? So whenever we are talking about apprenticeship, which means we are talking about skill development, and when we are talking about skill development, the ministry must be the Ministry of Skill Development and Entrepreneurship, which is headed by Mr. Dharmendra Pradhan. All right, and there is no need to go into the details of this particular mela. That is absolutely not required. and this mela is of course uh, these these melas are being organized to promote apprenticeship among the youth of the country right that is it question number 6 the eastern and north eastern cooperative dairy conclave 2022 organized by the national cooperative dairy federation of india was held in which city so again very direct question and very straight forward question so you just have to tell that where this conclave took place So it took took place in the capital of Sikkim, Gangtok. Right option A is the correct answer. And Sikkim chief chief minister is Mr. P S Gole. Very recently they have launched. Uh, Sikkim government has launched a Bahini scheme to provide sanitary pads to the girls which are going to uh, secondary and senior secondary school. In Sikkim, of course, you will find the Kanchenjunga, Kanchenjunga National Park, which is again, which is uh, a UNESCO World Heritage Site, of course. and yeah that's it about scheme and yes sikkim uh, recently blue duke has been uh, nominated has been uh, selected as the state butterfly of sikkim right so option a gangtok sikkim is the correct answer and of course sikkim is the first organic state of india we can't forget this first organic state of india is sikkim Question number seven. Recently, Union Minister of State for Health and Family Welfare, Dr. Bharti Pawar, addressed his second meeting of the high-level coalition on health and energy. Right. The first meeting was held in 2019 for strengthening the cooperation uh, between health and energy sectors, increasing political momentum. Blah blah blah. blah which international organization conveys it? Now, I have told you many times that the whole paragraph is not required. Point to point reading is not required. Read it quickly. Read it quickly. And just jump to the last line. so the question is which international organization conveys this high level coalition on health and energy so it is conveyed by world health organization who which is headquartered in geneva geneva is in switzerland and it is headed by mr tedros adhanom tedros adhanom is the chief of world health organization world economic forum is headquartered in colony which is again in switzerland unga is headquartered in new york and international level organization it is also headquartered in geneva which is of course in switzerland right option b is the correct answer and uh, by the way who is the minister of state see somewhere like yahan pe is question mein given hai that minister of state for health and family welfare see we have a cabinet minister who is the cabinet minister who is the minister of health and family welfare it's mr mansukh mandavia he is the cabinet rank minister now to assist cabinet rank minister there are various minister of states in the ministries one or two or or maybe three okay and all the ministries we have minister of state so basically these minister of state assist the cabinet minister uh, in its working right so this is the meaning of minister of state i hope this is clear conference on industry 4.0 challenges ahead and way forward were recently held in kewadia in gujarat it was aimed at <coughs> sensitizing industrial sectors in the country to adopt digital manufacturing processes and to promote automation and innovation in the industry very simple it was organized by which ministry so it was organized by ministry of heavy industries uh, which is headed by mr mahendra nath pande mr mahendra nath pande is the minister of heavy industry option a is the correct answer and the last question for today national workshop on ease of doing business was recently conducted in new delhi it highlighted the key learnings of continuous process of the ease of doing business exercise in india it was organized by which of the following organizations so very easy question when we are talking about ease of doing business 
it must be dpiit which is department for promotion of industry and internal trade all right so that is all about the session guys i hope all the questions and their explanations are clear if you have any doubts you can ask me in the comment section thank you so much for watching goodbye take care and god bless